Good morning, Northern Michigan, and welcome back to our next in the series of bird and birding videos. When last we left our birds, they were migrating north, ready for the next nesting season. First, who comes first? The male birds. The male birds come in before the females, and they do that for two reasons. First, to stake out a suitable territory, and second, so they can attract a female bird. How do they attract them? They sing. Most, not all, but most birds sing. And that singing is an advertisement. It tells the females, ooh, honey, here I am. I am hot and I am available. They show off their bright feathers, their plumage, and they sing their melodious song, inviting the females to fly about the territory that they have selected as a suitable nest site. Suitable nest sites very much depend on food availability. And while it's hard to believe now in our colder weather, we get lots of bugs in the spring and the summer, and that's what birds are looking for. Most birds pair up one male and one female. Not all birds do that. Some birds nest what we call colonially. That means the same species of bird will build nests in the same area. Examples of that are great blue herons, many gull species. But most birds pair up one male, one female, one territory, and one nest. Now, we are going to look at a variety of nests, and most birds build simple cup nest, and it is built out of dried twigs, grasses, and lined with a variety of fine materials. Some birds don't even build a nest. They scrape out a hollow on the ground. Piping plovers will scrape one out in the sand on beaches. Killdeer will scrape out of the dirt in an area where they are going to nest. Some birds build pendulous nests. Orioles do that. And finally, we have some birds who build cavity nests. They drill holes into dead or live trees and lay their eggs in that hole. They are very well protected. Now, back to the male birds. Male birds are very brightly covered because guess who sits on the nest incubating the eggs? It's not the male bird, it's the female bird. And females are much more drably colored than the male birds. Some male birds will help the females by incubating overnight when their plumage is not so obvious, but many don't help at all. They don't even help in nest construction. That's primarily up to the female. I got to give you an example of a love em and leave em bird, the ruby-throated hummingbird. The male comes in and he advertises to the females with that beautiful red gorget. He gets her with egg and off he goes to take care of his nectar patch. It's up to the female to build the nest, to incubate the eggs, to raise the young, and to teach them how to be hummingbirds. Love them and leave them. That's exactly what I call it. Now, here is an example of what is left of a hummingbird nest. You can see how tiny it is. Remember, it is there to protect the mom and the eggs. So these nests that we're going to look at come in different sizes. 
This is an American goldfinch nest. They are our latest nesters. They nest in July and August. They feed their young a regurgitant of thistle seeds, and thistle seeds don't ripen until late July and early August. They also like to line their nests with cattails, and the cattails start drying out right around then. This is an example of an eastern bluebird nest. And as you can see, this nest has one egg left in it. This egg was neither, probably never fertilized, and it never hatched. Next, we have an example of a tree swallow nest. And tree swallows look like this. They are aerial insectivores, and they love to line their nests with feathers. Next, we have a house wren nest. And a house wren looks like this. I don't have a large picture of it. And this nest, too, has one egg left in it that never hatched. Next, we have a red-eyed vireo nest. Red-eyed vireos are not very big, and they weave their nest and hang it from some branches. Next, we have a robin's nest. And the American robin loves to use mud to strengthen its nest. We already have some nesting because I've seen them carrying twigs. Finally, we have an example of a pendulous nest. This is a Baltimore Oriole nest. And you probably can't see inside that well, but this nest holds horsehair and llama fur which I put out in my nesting material boxes every year. And the female Orioles fight over that. Once the nest is complete and the eggs are laid, typically the female is the one who incubates. Once the eggs hatched, those baby birds are called nestlings. And baby birds come in two styles. They can be altricial, which is naked, featherless, and blind, like most of your songbirds, or precocial, which has some feathers and is capable of swimming right away. Those are geese and many, many waterfowls and loons. Once those baby birds have grown enough and they're ready to leave the nest, they're called fledglings. How soon do they leave the nest? It depends on the size of the bird. Some leave the nest in two weeks, some take over a month. <coughs> depends on the size and the species of the bird. Parents feed those baby birds almost exclusively on bugs, high protein diets, and that encourages rapid growth. Parents only have time, usually, to raise one brood per year. In two to four weeks after the birds have fledged, the parents have finished feeding them, and the fledglings are free to find their own territory and take off on their own. Thus ends our story of nests. Now wait, I have a commercial announcement. If you want to teach more about birds in the nest, this is the book that I highly recommend. It's called Into the Nest, and it's picture lives of family of familiar birds. It goes through courtship, it goes through nesting, and it goes through 
parent responsibilities. The photography is superb, so I highly recommend this book. Another book that I recommend, if you don't know what kind of a nest you're looking at, is Eastern Bird's Nest. You can go through it and try and figure out the nest that you're looking at in this book. If you're an engineer, you would like this one, Avian Architecture. It talks about how birds design, engineer, and build their nest. It's quite technical. And finally, I also recommend this last one, Nests, Eggs, and Nestlings for North American Birds. It talks about nests, how many eggs are laid, where you are likely to find them, and other interesting details. That ends my commercial announcement. I would like to thank my husband, Don, who's produced these videos, and Little Travers Conservancy for giving me the opportunity to share my love of birds and birdings. Have a great day, Northern Michigan.